Hey guys, Postron here, and today let's talk about my cast on crit Blazing Salvo Scion. Another league, another cast on crit character. I just can't help myself. In general, as a second character, I wanted to have something that blasts maps, for example, Legions. And we all know how good bow builds perform. I wanted to go more of the caster route or caster, who I was not self casting. But in general, Blazing Salvo was on my plate for a long time. I'm definitely not the first to do it, and there's a lot of iterations out there. What changed for me this league is the addition of the Utula's Hunger Chest, which I think fixes a lot of defensive problems for Cast on Crit. And by no means is the build now tanky, right? It's like softcore, it like feels good, right? With the extra HP that you get, it also makes a lot of the uniques that you couldn't really fit in before a lot more viable. For example, the Asenov's Mark Anathema combo before was pretty hard to pull off because you just lose so many life rolls, but now it feels a lot more warranted. You can throw four curses in there, Azanas Mark procs them all, it's pretty crazy, especially against single targets, and with how Blazing Salvo works, there's going to be a lot of overlaps. We're also using Nimis, but there is also a version with returning projectiles, whatever you want. In general, as for all of my endgame builds, they are usually very expensive, and on top of that, there's also obviously flippers and stuff like that, so just so you know, if you're just starting out the league or anything like that, this is not the build for you. However, I didn't use a Mage Blood. I didn't use a Headhunter. Fun fact, you actually can't even use a Headhunter on this build. So if you're juicing, you'll have to do with Mage Blood if you're a Headhunter enthusiast. I did, however, get an inspired learning in there. The build is definitely made for mapping, but it has a ton of single target damage with the Blazing Salvo overlap. So it can also do Ubers. It can basically do most things at a certain amount of investment. Biggest downside to the build doesn't have anything to do with budget or <laughs> how good it is. It's simply the servers and like your lag and stuff like that with how many things are going on on the screen with that many custom crit procs. Not really anything I can do about that, but we'll talk about it a little bit more in a second. But yeah, with that said, let's get into the video. Now, before we even get into the build, two disclaimers right here. First up, this is an expensive end game build. Just because I'm not using Mage Blood or I'm not using Headhunter, right? So it is more approachable does mean that the build isn't expensive, right? A lot of these items will go up if people like the build. If not, not too big of a deal. But in general, I just cannot control the market. That is something you either understand or you don't. I just cannot do anything about it. I can just share my builds. And the second one is, and that's especially for this build, is this is laggy as hell. So when it comes to custom crit builds, Blazing Salvo is pretty rough. I'll give you a showcase. It's usually fine if I'm not streaming in terms of like bitrate and stuff like that. It is a nightmare to stream on. It's like 144p city, right? It is really, really bad. As for the gameplay, it's usually fine unless there's like immortal mobs or something. The server just can't really catch up. There's also situations at like wave 27, 28, 29, simulacrum and stuff like that, where if they get too many tanky mods, the mobs will survive too long and there's so many projectiles and explosions on the screen. The game will just completely give up. It has never crashed. To be fair, but it's laggy as hell. So if you have a, a laptop or like a really bad system or even just an okay system, I would not tell you to play this build. The Blazing Salvo is a projectile AOE fire skill. So for example, if you look right here, I will shoot it over there and it has a certain amount of projectiles, right? You can increase that amount of projectiles with levels and other effects. Now, all of these projectiles can actually overlap and hit the same target. The further away you cast it, the more they will spread out and the more you will target it towards your character, the more clustered they will be. Now, Blazing Salvo, pretty obvious alone, but how do you actually clear with it, right? And there's two different setups. The one has returning projectiles and the other one has Nemus and Fork. I personally opted to use Nemus and Fork. So what happens is obviously the projectiles, whenever they hit an enemy, fork out into two new ones, which then also return back to you. But the downside is that everything spreads out, right? So you don't really hit all of them on single target. However, when they return, they still return on top of you back, right? And right here, you will see they're a little bit scattered, right? So not all of them are going to overlap. But if you're much with your cursor right next to your character, they will all return exactly on top of you. So what that means if you trigger it with something like split arrow and the cast on crit is if the enemy is right next to you, the cast on crit will do exactly this, right? So you don't have to do anything with your cursor that will basically bid on automatically. However, if you want more single target damage, then returning projectiles might be worth a shot. So returning projectiles works better also with Sniper's Mark, right, which also return back to you. But the main issue is you still have the less damage while returning, which overall, I didn't really feel the single target improvement that much. But if you want to try that out, you definitely can. 
having another ring slot open would also mean fixing mana a lot easier. And obviously the reason why I said fork you can only use with Nemus is because if you use returning projectiles, there's not really anything else you can cut empower is like 70% more damage or something like that. You can't cast your spell without inspiration, right? So there's there's no wiggle room here. So not only do you lose fork, you also get like a 60% damage less multiplier on your returning projectiles. However, it looks a lot better, right? So returning projectiles, as you can see here, both the incoming and the outgoing ones can all overlap on the same single target. But once again, there is a hefty price for that because not only do you lose the support gem, which is usually more damage, if you don't care about fork and you just want single target, you could even go, I don't know, awakened LE focus for like 40-50% more damage, right? So you're losing a support gem and then on the returning projectiles, which are just for free basically, on those you get like slapped on with a 60% less damage on top. So even though it looks a lot better, I have not found the single target to be significantly better or even better at all. And the huge thing that you do lose is the clear. So if you think about how this looks right here, right? So we talk about this here. Looks kind of cool, right? But when you're clearing a map, what is actually going to be huge is you can't see the fork here. You don't even have to. You can just already see that the screen is just covered with way more projectiles. And now all of these projectiles will fork out. And just to give a little bit of context about Sniper's Mark and returning projectiles and why it's actually a lot better is I use Sniper's Mark on this build not really because of splitting. With Nemus, the splitting doesn't really work that well because only the original projectile really splits. It's a little bit complicated. But what you have to know is with returning projectiles, your Sniper's Mark will split better. The problem is, once again, even with all that said, and even with all the initial projectiles hitting and returning, the problem remains where your clear gets a lot worse and the returning projectiles have a huge less damage multiplier, so it is not even worth it. Just the fact that Nemis does not have that less damage multiplier and you don't need to use a support gem is just really big, just so you know. I understand the Sniper's Mark interaction. If you want to know more about it, I'll probably link like a a Reddit thread about that down below. But yeah, that's where I stand personally. So that's basically the gist. Now, next up, let's talk about cast and crit. There's three types of cast and crit, and we chose bow. Now, why is that, right? So the advantage of bow is that you can use Asenov's mark. And there's tech that I'm not the first person to do this, but basically anathema, right? Your maximum amount of power charges or maximum limit of power charges is also the maximum limit of curses so in this case we can have four or more curses if you really want to but four curses is what we're looking for and Azanov's mark triggers those at will and this is way better than getting i don't know four different curse on hits because those are all level one curses whereas these are all 21 20 gems which are infinitely stronger whenever we cast any bow skill you will see the curse targeting automatically now there's two procs you could use against single target blast strain is Far and away the best choice. Anomalous Blast Rain also gives you a chance to cover an Ash. I still have one Anomalous Blast Rain in my main setup with my Mana Forged Arrows, which gets cast as well. Important to note, you have to have Life Tap support here, so it actually works. So that gets cast. Cool. Gives you covered in Ash. But in a single target, this just gives you perfect proc rate, basically. Whereas Split Arrow is just way nicer against, I don't know, packs and Cleary in general. So for example, if you look at this, right? If I cast Blast Rain, there is a small delay to it, right? And that delay you will feel during maps, especially if you're doing fast-paced content. However, with Split Arrow, not only do you get a way smoother playstyle, you also get the returning projectiles on Split Arrow as well from Nemis, right? And since we have so many projectiles just from Split Arrow alone with all the levels, that's just really, really strong. However, while this setup is very good in a single target, while clearing, you're not really casting four times on a single enemy, right? So not all of your curses will be up all the time. This is more of like a single target thing, a little bit of single target tech. Um, if you want to experiment with Blazing Salvo, you can also go melee or one. They have different upsides. Now, personally, I don't really like melee all that much. Melee is basically Cyclone is what you would do. And it has a good proc rate, but that's kind of the same as Blast Strain, whereas you don't have the tech with Azanus Mark at all. However, Wand, Kinetic Blast is just so beautiful for clearing. I mean, Split Arrow is really good, don't get me wrong, but you just cannot beat KB. So if you're planning on, for example, going through Legions, I mean, honestly, I don't think you can really beat Wand. You will probably lose half of your damage, but... When you're clearing packs, it's actually not that big of a deal. Now, some other tech I have on this build, I guess, besides the Anathema and the Azanus Mark, is actually Utula's Hunger. So Utula's Hunger is one of the new chests. I talked about it in one of my videos. 
which I think is just great in general for cast on crit builds. And that's mostly because cast on crit builds are in a weird situation here on the right side of the tree where they can't really get too many defensive layers and they're kind of stretched thin in a lot of places. So what you can do here is you just get a chunk of life from Utula's Hunger. 987 to maximum life if there are no life modifiers on other equipped items. And that means basically any item cannot have life rolls. So for example, you can see that right here. I could have crafted life on, but that would break my item. And this is not only a budget chest, it is just a lot of life. It's like a double Chaos heart with six sockets. It is quite incredible. And since it's corrupted, you can also get plus two gem levels or increased damage. We're using a replica soul tether on top. Now, since we have a lot of life pool, we can also get quite a bit of energy shield there. 7% of maximum life as extra maximum energy shield. And then you also get 15% more from Corrupted Soul. Corrupted Soul also makes it that whenever you take damage, a portion of that will also go to your life first, which makes Corrupted Soul really strong. And we can actually use it even though usually we would need cooldown reduction from our belt simply because we are using the Saboteur Ascendancy, uh, which gives us 15% increased cooldown recovery rate. However, one big downside of using Utula is that you cannot use Headhunter, which in hindsight is definitely a thing that I need to point out. Mage Blood still works. Since we're cast on crit, reminder here, your cooldown has to be at least 52% at every stage, okay? Otherwise, your effective trigger rate will not be at 10.10. .10. This is important. It cannot be 51 it cannot be 50. It has to be 52 or more. Beyond 52, there is not really much to be said there because the next breakpoint is too far off for it to be worth it to scale there. And this can be a hassle to get to with like Maven Boots or like Beltcraft, Shaper Beltcraft or something like that. But on here, it's pretty easy because you already get 15% from your Ascendancy. Now then we get 8, I think up to 10% from your Boots. I have 8 here from the Eldritch Implicit. And then you fill up the rest with Awakened Cast on Critical Strike. If you look at mine right here, uh, I have a plus one level of su socketed support gems, which is pretty hard to get, plus the plus two from the craft, which is very easy to get, for plus three. So if you look right here, I have 34, which is actually way too much. However, if for some reason, I don't know, you don't have something, you can also always go for the mastery here that gives you plus three to level of all critical support gems that also gives you more CDR. Now next up, let's talk about our ascendancy. First up, there is a weird graphical bug going on right now with Forbidden Flesh, Forbidden Flame. I have a Forbidden Flesh, Forbidden Flame for Assassin right here, and it shows up as like kind of this thing, which uh, yeah, it looks very goofy, just so you know. Now, Saboteur gives us a lot of ink AOE, gives us cooldown recovery rate. It's just overall a very, very nice ascendancy. Uh, and then we have Deadeye, which gives us Mark Effect. It gives us additional projectile and tailwind. Now you might ask, okay, that's all well and good, but why are we not Assassin or Deadeye like a lot of the other cast on crit builds? That is mostly for convenience and also because Sion is a lot better this patch because these attributes actually matter a lot more and passive points do as well. This build has a lot of points. These three points here would give me an extra 13% more damage or something, which is crazy per point efficiency. And those are my worst points, so I had to cut them. So that just gets to tell you how point starved we are. And the second reason is with tattoos, you can actually leverage these stats on your passive tree. As you can see right here, I'm basically tattooed out of my mind, right? So that is only possible because of Scion. Otherwise, I would have to get like, I don't know, 200 stats on my gear in general. And I'm already kind of trying to get there with all these uniques, right? That is pretty crazy. I have my life fixed because I have Utulas. I can use all of these uniques and still not be complete squishy, but I still need to get my resistances somewhere. And therefore, I can't also have a hunger for attributes. And otherwise, I would have to like skip all my tattoos. And another nice upside for Scion is that you have this really strong unnatural instinct right here. So Unnatural Instinct does actually work with Tattoos. Now, this is already a spot that is a payoff for Scion. So you get the cast speed, which doesn't do anything for us. You get all this nice attack speed. You get a lot of accuracy, a lot of movement speed, the life here, right? But on top of that, you also get these small Tattoos right here. In this case, I used it to fix my cold rest and get a little bit of life. Just so you know, um, the way you allocate these is you actually have to take the points first, then put the Tattoo on and then respect them. You can't just put tattoos on stuff that you have not allocated. With that said though, Scion mostly just has the most movement speed because I get to tattoo a lot of stuff and because I get both elusive and tailwind and the action speed. So I don't have to go for elusive tailwind boots. So I can also go for action speed on top of that. So it was the fastest version. That does not mean, however, that you cannot go Deadeye or Assassin. The builds would look 
kind of the same. You basically wouldn't have that on natural instinct and you would have a little bit less movement speed but overall they would both work all right then let's quickly showcase the build the maps that you don't want to run are less cdr reflect obviously elemental reflect that is and the third one was oh yeah cannot leech those are no go all right so there's not that much to say about this basically we're going to leave blast rain on the side for mapping split arrow is a lot more fun if you have Blast Rain, one thing that will happen is that often it will take a little bit to proc because it still has to fall down. In that case, you definitely want a phasing fast so you can phase through the enemies while they die, right? Otherwise, you're going to have like unit collision. This is not really going to happen with split arrow whatsoever. So that's nice. But other than that, we have Val Haste on, on left click. Once again, always attack without moving so it auto activates. And then we just go our merry way. Let's activate the mirror real quick. And yeah, there's really not that much to say right here. Right? This is how it looks like. You just run through and uh, the quality is probably going to be really bad. Actually, let me activate game capture. This should be a lot better now. It might still be bad. Yeah, it's definitely not as bad as when we stream. That is for sure. Let's just do this. I don't even know what that was. Was that meteor? I'm gonna die to a meteor. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's just run through. So this is how the Delhi experience would go. You might end up seeing this feeling a little bit bad later because it will start lagging. So once we're a little bit further away from the mirror, the mobs might be tanky enough to take some hits. And at that point, the game will lag out a little bit. But as you can see right here, it is overall pretty smooth sailing. Our defenses are holding up pretty well because we just have so much recovery. In this case, we took a huge hit. Um, but due to our progenesis, that was also not really a problem. Now, let's go down here a little bit. Let's see if uh, something ends up killing us, but we should overall be fine. Uh, now, one of the things that I really like about this build is that you usually feel really safe because you have so much HP, which usually you would take like physical taken as extra, right? You would go for a lightning coil probably on this build if you want to be semi-tanky. Okay, in this case, the mobs are not... I mean, there's not really hard map mods in here at all, right? So uh, there's not really much to say. Let's get to the boss. Now, at the boss, there's only one important thing that you have to note, which is you have to stand on top of the boss whenever something happens. So your projectiles return to you and they return to you on top, right? So let's get this guy burrowed down and then we go in and now what we do is we stand on top of him and he's just going to get absolutely deleted, right? So that's just important to note. There is a small delay for uh, whenever your damage comes in because your projectiles return. Now let's talk about items next. First up, the bow. One of the most misunderstood things that I see people do is actually use cast on crit support on a shaper bow. And that is not a good idea for a few reasons. The first one is you're losing one of your prefixes. Your prefixes that you get on this bow, which by the way, you can make completely deterministically, right? With the multi-mod, is you lose either plus one to socketed gems, plus two level socketed support gems, or 130 to 140 spell damage, which first up is not that great because you don't get awakened cast on crit, right? Awakened cast on crit gives you a lot of freedom on your gear to do whatever you want because it gives you a lot of cooldown recovery. Also, a shaper bow will not have synthesized implicits. Stuff you want on your Synthesized Implicit is plus one level socketed support gem, Explody, which is ultra expensive, and also spells deal double damage. Those are like the best ones, followed by stuff like generic fire damage, generic spell damage, crit multiplier. And with Vivid Vulture Beasts, you can actually reroll these over and over. So if you're willing to put 10, 20, 30 divines into your bow, you can start off already having a lot of good stats before you even start crafting. So do not fall for Shaper Bows. Second thing, the base should be either spine bow or ivory bow. Ivory bow is basically the same thing as spine bow, just that it needs less dexterity. If that was the case, you need less dex so you can do two more. In my case, it still works out, but I would have preferred an ivory bow. They are just a lot more expensive because people know about it. I'm just pointing it out so you're aware. And as for the craft, it is very deterministic. It's not super cheap. It's like around about eight to 10 divines, I think average. Um, if you wanna know how exactly that works, Loco actually made a video recently which I will link down in the description. He will basically guide you how to make this. Then we have Utulas. Now, definitely check if your items have any sort of life mods. That's not just maximum life. That could be a random life recoup that you just had to slam on your item that now bricks your item or whatever. You have to pay a little bit of attention. As I said, the biggest downside of Utulas, in my opinion, is that you can't use Headhunter. Obviously, on a cast and crit build, Mageblood is OP and GG. But if you don't have that and you like playing with Headhunter, that is a... No go. However, to make up for that, we have a very easy inspired learning that I have right here. It's obviously not the same as Headhunter, but 
just pointing out. Then we have an abhorrent interrogation, which is absolutely crazy for single target. What it basically does is enemies take up to 60% increased damage with Wither, right? Wither is usually something that chaos damage builds scale, but with this, you can also scale it for Ellie. It's incredibly strong. The one downside though, at the end here, your hits cannot penetrate or ignore elemental resistances. So pen is completely useless. However, we have a quad curse setup. That is not the same as pen. We're reducing resistances. That still works but you just cannot have stuff like fire penetration in your setup. Then we have Azanoffs, which the whole reason why I wanted to start this build is because I got this helmet for 30 chaos. It has a plus to AOE gems and plus to curse gems. It's not that big of a deal. I just found it funny that it is exactly the perfect item that I wouldn't even have put into POB because I just didn't think it would ever exist. So that was kind of funny. It gives you an extra 6% damage or whatever. It's not that big of a deal. A Blazing Salvo additional projectile enchant is very strong. However, Blazing Salvo has a lot of projectiles already, so there are already diminishing returns. It is nice though for clear because with Nemus, the projectiles spread out, so it's not just single target damage. And like I said, yeah, this triggers a... Whenever you hit your bow attack, this triggers one of your curses. So after you hit four times, all of your curses are applied on a single target. Then we have the boots, which for implicit, it's very important. Action speed, cooldown recovery rate. Make sure that you are at the 52% cooldown recovery rate. You don't really have to go over. However, do note that something like Azanoffs and Mana Forged Arrows, which we use in your main setup, do have different breakpoints. So even though it might not seem like going over 52% would do anything, it might still for those. So definitely check those breakpoints as well. Now, as for boots, otherwise, we have spell suppressed to basically get to... We don't actually go to 100% on this build. We go to, I think, 90%. And then we have the lucky. So that's pretty nice. You can also cap if you really want to with extra tattoos. Yeah, and what you want here is res, right? We are very res starved because we have so many uniques. So get as much res on here as you humanly can. Don't get life on it, once again, because of your chest. But yeah, as much movement speed as you can is also really nice. You don't really need Onslaught. Now, you can personally get Onslaught on kill if you want to, but I really prefer the tattoo right here. It is just more consistent. Now, then we have the Replica Soul Tether, which I actually didn't realize that this is not a life mod. It is a defense energy shield mod, so you can still use it with your chest, which, well, today I learned, I guess. I corrupted a few and I hit this, which Grace is a little bit better and I could... I think get one more tattoo into it, but the corruption overall that would be the best would be movement speed, obviously. There's like crit multi, stuff like that, which would be way better than what I have here. But overall, tattoo your stuff with defense modifier so you can go from 6% max life as extra energy shield to 7%. This just gives you a ton of energy shield. Even without the chest on just 3k life, this is a thousand energy shield. And Corrupted Soul splits your damage between energy shield and life, which since we have instant leech and we have so many hits right that is a ton of actually sorry here that is a ton of recovery on quiver what you're looking for is crit multi crit multi is a big problem on this build we have a lot of unique jewels which means we don't get that much crit multi from our normal jewels that is like i said really really important so the way we crafted this one is we spammed deafening essences of scorn for the crit multi until we got projectile speed projectile speed just so you know is only like a comfy stat but it is very noticeable because if you're like a lot on the move while mapping you don't want to, it to take forever for your projectiles to return back to you and then we reforged chaos suffix is going to be changed reforged chaos with an open suffix and we hit tier 2 chaos res and we just kept it for the prefixes there's not much you can do fire cold damage i mean it's basically negligible we can't get life so we just got energy shield evasion, which is nice. For the implicit, if you can get crit multi, that is better than basically anything else you can get. Crit strike chance is okay. Something like fire damage is strong. You can also fix some resistances. As for jewelry, as I said, I'm personally using Nemus. You can try the returning projectile memes. It's a little bit more focused damage, but overall your clear will take a pretty big dip. As well as that, you can't use fork, which is a problem because you need to use the anomalous projectile or the returning projectile in your setup, right? So yeah, if you can get a Nemus, that is huge. Uh, in general, if budget for Nemus is a problem, this whole build is probably not for you because Nemus is just one of the many pieces that you need, right? Anathema. Now, this implicit is actually kind of overkill, as I learned. I bought this one initially because I thought I would have mana problems, but with how many hits I have, this and the leech from Split Arrow, believe it or not, was actually pretty much enough. And if you still have problems, you can still get one or two mana gate on hit on the jewel, 
So this implicit is not something you should be paying like 10 divines for, like my dumbass did, right? Uh, just saying, but uh, yeah. So Anathema is basically what makes us go for the quad curse as well. As for Amulet, there is a lot of things you can do. You can do Ashes of the Stars. The problem with the new Dragon Fang Amulet is, is that we're, I think, already at level 29 or 30 on our Blazing Salvo already. And going over 30 has diminishing returns. So if you get a plus 3 from Replica Dragon Fang, that gets you from 30 to 33. And usually plus 1 is like 10-11% more damage. But over 30, it's only like 5-6% more damage. So it's actually not that good. It's still better than nothing, but what you really want to do with your amulet is fix your mana. If you have a mage blood, completely ignore what I just said. You have it reduced mana on your flask, done, right? But otherwise, you need the minus non-channeling mana cost right here. And you probably also want the reduced mana cost, which I tried to hit, but then I hit projectile speed, projectile damage, and the mana kind of worked out. Just know that instead of this projectile speed, projectile damage in the prefix, you would like percentage reduced mana. The Veiled mod with a Veiled Chaos, you get up to 7%, which goes to 8% with the quality. Now, whether you get plus one to fire skills or plus one to all skills, there is quite a difference, but there's also a difference in price. So yeah, if that is a problem for you, sure. The base here already costs as much as an Ashes of the Stars, so you can also just go for that immediately. It's also not a bad thing to do. As you can see right here, I'm even going for Dreamer to fix my mana. So you can imagine how annoying mana cost would be if you go for Ashes, which has none of those stats. As for flasks, I go for a Diamond Flask with Crit. This is very important to have up. Very strong for a cast on Crit build. It's hard to get to 100% without it. If you're an Assassin, that's definitely something that's on the table. Progenesis is just OP. If you have one, you have one. If you don't, you don't. I wouldn't replace this with an Amethyst Flask. I will probably replace it with like a Quartz Flask or something like that with like reduced effect of Curses or whatever. Unless you have a severe lack of Chaos Res on your gear, I'm actually capped with Progenesis. And obviously a Quicksilver Flask with increased movement speed, the Jade Flask with increased evasion, all of that stuff. And I'm actually using a Life Flask like a noob. Now I do have Immune to Corrupted Blood on one of my jewels, but the reason I like Eternal Life Flask for mapping in general is whenever I loot and there's like ground effects or there's stuff hitting me, I can just flask up and ignore it, right? Like these leftover mobs. But in general, you can definitely replace this with something else. Now, as for jewels, three of these have a specific placement. Unnatural Instinct is extremely strong right here. I already talked about this in the intro. Don't forget to tattoo both of these right here. They still count for Unnatural Instinct in case you didn't know. The way you have to first allocate them, then tattoo them, then respec. Otherwise, it does not work. The second one is a Lethal Pride. This is not because of a Keystone or anything like that. This is just first to fix our strength for kind of free and then also to get some nice bonuses. Now, the two top tier mods you can get is double damage and then physical taken as fire. So here, for example, we have double damage, physical damage taken as fire. We're on the right side of the tree. We do have a lot of HP, but we still would like a little bit of physical mitigation because we don't have armor. So more double damage right here. Um, some fire res here is never bad. Any res is good. Increased maximum life and then also a little bit of strength. This basically fixes our strength. As you can see right here, this gives us a ton. And then the third thing is inspired learning. Since I can't use Headhunter on the build because of the chest, I have an inspired learning right here. What I had before is actually a warrior's tail, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so I used to have a warrior's tail right here because I have a plus one projectile tattoo right here and that goes from one to two. And it also gives me a little bit of movement speed, a little bit of life. That's all nice and all. But Inspired Learning is just too broken, especially since we're doing Legions. Just know that if you're not mapping, then Inspired Learning is obviously not that good. If you don't have that many rares to kill, you definitely want to go for Warrior Steel. With those out of the way, the only thing that's really left is a Forbidden Flesh, Forbidden Flame here that gives me Assassin. Just to point this out, because people always forget this whenever they... I don't know, get flipped on by somebody who just buys up all of them. It doesn't matter whether you get Saboteur on your jewel and you pick Assassin, or you pick Assassin and take Saboteur. It's literally the same, just so you know, whatever is cheaper, you take. This is basically so we get Elusive, which is very strong defensively, and it gives us movement speed. It gives us base crit, it gives us power charge on crit. Otherwise, I would have to go for some weird setup in my Mana Forge arrow setup, and that would mean I would have to cut Combustion. Yeah, that's what we do right here. They are quite strong. Then we have two rare jewels left. The first one is basically just Corrupted Blood and Crit Multi. I actually don't need the mana reservation. Completely ignore that. Corrupted Blood, Crit Multi. Once again, we are Crit Multi starved. 
to the death, right? So that is very important to have everywhere. And then this one right here, which I crafted myself, I bought the base, and then I just re-rolled with Harvest crit over and over again until you get at least two crit multi-stats and then any fourth mod on top. And another small thing I forgot is this Watcher's Eye right here. Watcher's Eye, there's not really anything you need to get. If you want to fix your mana, you can go for Discipline with minus mana cost, but that's up to you. The chance to evade while affected by grace is actually crazy strong because it's additive chance to evade. So if you get to like, I don't know, 80, 81, 82%, that will literally get you from 82 to 90, which is basically another half of the hits that would normally hit you, don't hit you. Chaos Res, while affected by Purity of Elements, is great because it takes away from needing it on your gear, which is quite annoying. And then the Flash Charge, when you deal a crit strike, while having precision i'm not super big about it it has an internal cooldown but it was on the watcher's eye so i just took it other stuff that would be really strong is physical taken as ellie while affected by purity of elements crit multi while precision even attack speed while precision every bit of attack speed you have will make the build feel a lot better also movement speed while having grace so then let's go over gems first up your main setup is either blast rain which is a lot more consistent or split arrow but only do split arrow if you actually have the damage to back it up because you're going to get less procs, but it's going to feel better while mapping. Then you have Awaken Cast on crit. Whether this needs to be on level 3, level 4, level 5, depends on how much levels you have on your bow and stuff like that. Just make sure that you have you are on the 52% cooldown recovery breakpoint. Then we have Blazing Salvo, which the Anomalous version gives you up to 40% proc speed, which makes this build feel so much better. On top of that, we have the next most important is probably Inspiration. You will need Divergent Inspiration because it gives you an extra 10% reduced mana cost. And mana cost is a big deal on cast and crit builds. Once again, unless you have Mage Blood, then you're good to go. Whatever. Nothing matters. Empower 4, really strong. We get a lot of plus 2 support gems. So this is like, like basically half of your damage. It's completely broken. And then we have Awakened Fork at the end for clear. You can also sub this out against single targets, although that would be kind of weird with the colors because what you would probably substitute in would be something like Awakened Elemental Focus. Then we have our second six link setup, and this is something you can kind of customize if you want to, right? So I have a Mana Forge setup right here, which I think is the best way to go. You need Life Tap, so it always procs. And then on top of that, what I went with is two skills, one Frenzy, gives me frenzy charges which is very nice anomalous one gives you one extra projectile so it just hits more frequently and then anomalous blast rain which gives you enemies are covered in ash and i basically have this here again if you're already using blast rain in your main setup i think it's still nice to have covered in ash up more frequently and if you have split arrow it's basically a no-brainer then you have a divergent uh, calling strike just calling strike is good enough, obviously very strong, and then combustion for another minus 10 res. Now then, our helm setup is basically four different curses. Now, it actually triggers in the way you put them in, right? So it only triggers one whenever you attack. It says trigger a socketed skill gem. So the most important one, in my opinion, is to trigger sniper's mark immediately. Then the next one for me personally is enfeeble. This is basically just I don't die immediately or I get like one shot against hard enemies. And then I put Flammability, which is a little bit better than Ellie Weakness, but you can play around with this however you want. At the end of the day, against single target, it's going to be up really, really quick. We're going to be talking about like a fraction of a second or something. We have a Cast of Nemesh Taken set up with Immortal Call and Cast of Nemesh Taken. If you can fit in Life Tap right here, that's pretty good. Just make sure you actually have the mana open for it. We don't have any Endurance Charges. It's literally just there for a small burst of damage reduction against harsh hits. Then we have our Aura setup, which consists of Grace. Purity of Elements, Anomalous gives you a little bit extra aura effect, and then Anomalous Precision. So Precision is basically just there for number one, my Watcher's Eye, and then number two as well to get the little bit of extra accuracy that you need on top of everything else. I only have a level three Enlightened because I didn't need more, but if you need level four, the more mana you have open, the better it's just going to feel. And then we have two one-offs. The first one is Val Haste. I actually have this one on my left click, which is really nice. It just activates every single time whenever it's up. Just make sure you set it to always attack without moving. That is important. And then also flame dash to get over hurdles. You can also go blink arrow if you really want to. Now, before we talk about the passive tree, I want to quickly talk about tattoos. New thing in Path of Exile since this league. What am I doing with them? So first up, if you can't tattoo everything because you have problems with your stats, it is what it is. Not any of these are really like build defining there is a few one-offs that i would definitely include now the first one is take the 30 dex note here and just give yourself onslaught it is always up it is on hit and not on kill it is 
great. It just feels absolutely awesome. If you have to cap your resistance, I get a little bit of resistance here or there, but mostly you will be stacking a ton of percentage life. The more life you get, the more replica soul tether will give you an energy shield that is definitely noticeable as well as that percentage life pairs really well with all the flat life you get from your chest so you will see that most of mine are actually that a few small things that i have is for example a five percent chance to hinder we're hitting a lot so it's up a lot right so enemies are quite frequently slowed i get the plus one projectile right here all i have to do is take these two semi dead points this point isn't even that dead but this is a completely dead point the other ones I will take anyways. And you can potentially get another additional projectile right here if you just take a single point plus one projectile. However, we're at a lot of projectile count already, so I didn't see it as necessary, but that is definitely something you could do. I didn't really want to put another 10 divines into the build. Problem with tattoos is you can't resell them after you're done with the build, right? So the build felt good. I was like, this is just a waste of 10 divines but if you want more power for the build if you want to play it for longer 100 percent do so now what did i did with my dex tattoos those are probably the most interesting ones well i'm pretty basic what i did is projectile speed right here because projectile speed makes the blazing salvo feel better and then filled out the rest with movement speed that's just all i basically did feels great but you can do with these whatever you want now going through the passive tree important here is we have two cluster setups one and two one of them should have Cremator, Doriani's Lesson, and Prismatic Heart. If you can fix your res without Prismatic Heart, that's fine, but these are very efficient points. You can also not take those and go for Alira. Cremator makes it so Corpse Explosion is not really a thing anymore. It sometimes still is, but a lot less than it usually is. And Doriani's Lesson gives you your Leech. Leech is incredible on this build. We get instant Leech, and we have a lot of hits, so that is a ton of recovery. If you look at our POB, you can see right here, it is just pretty much out of control. And at the same time, we also have Energy Shield Leech down here, which we take a one-pointer over there. That's all you basically need. Now, for our second large cluster, we have Prismatic Heart and Corrosive Elements. This gives us our exposure. Another thing you can do is if you can spare a link here, you can theoretically go for Awakened Fire Pen. It's not for the damage, just to apply the exposure, but corrosive elements is just much better and once again prismatic card because we're really tight on resistances then we have four mediums which the crit ones are all the same quick getaway and pressure points the pretty basic for any cost of crit builds they are huge you have to check in your pob do you get to 100 percent increased crit chance with your power charges up with your flask up if no you need to get more crit right so we have that all over here and then if you have space for it and you don't need the crit anymore like in my case here you go for a projectile one with repeater. So the build feels a little bit better with attack speed. And then you also get eye to eye, which is a ton of increased damage. Once again, since we're res starved, do not forget to get like these small bursts of res, right? This can actually save it, right? Obviously, this league gets a lot easier with tattoos to fix your resistances. But every one of those you don't have to put res on, you can put life on, right? So that is also a big deal. So look into the jewels that you get, these small points do matter. Other than that, pretty straightforward. We go for every life we see, every crit we see. Melding here is incredibly strong because we're obviously kind of a hybrid theme here. We have Written in Blood as well. Next level, I would take the life and energy shield right here. And at level 100, I would take the 6% life. As for the life mastery right here, this is basically to fix your mana. Skills cost life instead of 30% of mana cost. I only have this Frenzy Charge right here because I needed it to do Inspired Learning. If you don't need Inspired Learning and you have uh, Warrior's Legacy, cut these two. And instead, try and get Doomcast up here for some extra Spell Crit and Crit Multi. Reservation Mastery here is nice. Once again, we're Purity of Elements, so even more resistances from this, right? Obviously, it gets better with Grace, stuff like that. Other than that, is there anything interesting? Yeah, so definitely take all these Accuracy Clusters. Once again, we're mostly Uniques. We're going to have to fix our res and our accuracy from a lot of the passive tree and stuff like that. So yeah, both acuity and depth perception you want. Depth perception you want anyways because you already need this point for the plus one projectile. So that's a no-brainer. Crit multi once again, really, really important. Get it wherever you want. And then we round it out with some quick step and spell suppression. Note here, I'm currently not kept for spell suppression because I don't really need it for mapping. I have a lucky spell suppress. If you want to be actually capped, you should use some of your tattoos to do so. You can get 2% spell suppress per. Now, next up, let's talk about mana cost. If you have a mage blood, completely disregard and skip this section. You're fine. You have the most broken item in the game. It doesn't matter. But 
for most of the player base, I have to kind of fix them the mana somehow else. And how do you do that? Well, first up, two things that have to be true is Blast Strain or Split Arrow or however you proc Castle Crit has to cost at least one mana for your Mana Forge setups to work, which can be a little bit of a balancing act sometimes. And on top of that, this is not really a problem you're ever going to have, but just to point it out, your Blazing Salvo also has to cost at least one mana, so your Inspiration actually works and you get the more damage. Now, the first thing that has to be in there is Divergent Inspiration. Every bit of percentage reduced mana gets better the more you have. So getting just Inspiration is probably not going to cut it. You need Divergent Inspiration. It's absolutely ridiculous. You get a lot of reduced mana cost. As well as that, level of socketed support gem will also make this effect even better. Now, next up, and this is the reason I have a rare amulet, is minus mana cost, right? Or percentage reduced mana cost on the amulet is really huge. So non-channeling skills have minus eight with the quality on top. And then you can also, in a prefix, a veiled mod, can get up to 7% reduced mana cost. Now, mana gain on hit jewels are also really uh, huge. You can get one to two on a suffix on jewels. The main problem with that is that you lose a crit multi slot. That's something where you usually get crit multi, which is kind of big. Don't sleep on mana leech. Before you freak out about mana, definitely try it out and see if you actually go um. I was very surprised how much mana you actually leeched just with your like split arrow that you don't even scale or anything like that. So that was kind of surprising. And you obviously get two mana here on hit already. So that's kind of huge. You can also experiment with getting another point here that can also already fix it. And then you can also get a Discipline Watcher's Eye. So you can get up to like minus 10, I think, on a Discipline Watcher's Eye. But then you would also have to make space for Discipline somewhere on your setup. I personally have this Anathema, but it is going to get quite hard to get. And as I said, it is quite overkill. You can also get percentage reduced mana cost on one of your rare jewels right here, but that will be once again in place of crit multi. As for leveling, I leveled this with uh, the max roll twink leveling guide by Tai Tai Killer, which I think should be updated whenever this video is out. I'm not 100% sure. I think there's like an anoint missing and a few items are like maybe a little bit outdated, but in general, you get the gist. You're basically doing unarmed and you're uh, going for dexterity stacker with one with nothing. You just breeze through the game with Smite, and then once you get to a certain level, whatever level you need, probably it's around level 72 until you can equip your items, then you're ready to go. Link to the guide down in the description. And yeah, that's about it. Another cast on crit behind us. Uh, I've played a lot in the last few leagues, and that is just because I really like to play it, even after the nerf where you actually have to pay mana. Now, at this point, I've tried quite a bit. When it comes to, like, ranking, I would say... Wand is overall still my favorite when it comes to clear. However, the um, Azenov's Mark uh, quad curse setup with Anathema is pretty damn crazy against single target damage. So that's still something I'm not sure. But when it comes to clear, even though Split Arrow is very, very good, it is nowhere near the godliness that Kinetic Blast is, for example. So I would love to see somebody make a KB version of this, kind of like you wouldn't be able to have a Mana Forge setup either. I, there is a lot of downsides. Let's be real. There, there is a lot of downsides. You would also lose your Mana Forge setup. So yeah, Spellsinger kind of sucks because it reserves mana, right? But I'm sure you can make it work. Just that your single target would probably be a lot worse. But yeah, that's about it. And uh, try to lag less than I do.